Take a step into the river Get down on your knees Come to the mountain While taking in the view You will find that life is Greater than you knew When you go through the storm I will hold you, keep you warm When you stay in the night, I will shelter, I will find, I will find. Hello crafty friends, it's Caroline and I'm back today with a new and fun tutorial. I made this prototype here and I just love it. I think it's super cute. I used the papers that I received in my Country Craft Creations warehouse box, and I just think it turned out really cute, but I wanted to play around with a new type of binding. I wanted to come up with a way that I could stitch my little signatures in and attach them so that they would be, you know, attached to a more traditional mini album spine for my book here. And I love the way it turned out. I've got a little magnet closure here. <laughs> I was just able to run some ribbon along the sides. I love the detail of the cut aparts here that says enjoy the little things. On the back, I've put a little element that says patisserie. And then we've got another one of the cut aparts here that says the best things are sweet. And I just think it turned out super cute. And I wanted to show you guys how to make it. So I'm going to go through and we're going to make this album again. I'm going to make a couple little modifications to it. But this time we're going to make it using this collection here. Now this is one of the Country Craft Creations exclusive paper lines. This one was released last year and it is just absolutely the most darling paper. And of course it's on that super high quality vellum paper that Tamara has. And I think you're going to love it. So let's go ahead and get started. There will be measurements in the accompanying cutting guide that will be available on my website. There will be a link in the description notes below for that. And we're going to go ahead and get started by cutting our chipboard. Now for this album, you only need one piece of heavyweight chipboard, and we're going to get everything we need out of this one piece. And the first cut we want to make is at eight inches. So I'm going to scooch this on over here to the eight inch mark and make my cut. And when I cut with a paper trimmer like this, it's not gonna cut all the way through. So I'm gonna have to make subsequent cuts once I've finished with that. So I like to take a finger blade and just run it right through that groove of that cut that I, the first pass that I made on my trimmer, and I get a nice clean cut every time. And so I really like the way that works. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this piece here that we just cut off at eight inches. We're gonna trim that down to six inches. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to trim it this time. I'm going to trim it to five and seven eighths. This is a six by eight folio, but that inner piece that folds in, I need to have a little bit of extra room on here so that it doesn't butt up next to this portion here. So it's going to give me a little bit of room there. This one I didn't do that on. This one I made it exactly the same width as there. And it's not really problematic, although it is touching there in some places. It's optional if you want to cut it shorter. I'm just choosing to do that. So I wanted to point out that that's what I'm doing there. So I'm going to bring this one over to five and seven eighths and make that cut there. So I've got this little tiny little eighth of an inch section out of the middle. If I make both of the preliminary cuts on here prior to trimming it out, I find that it's easier than going back and trimming off that tiny little bit. So then I'm just going to run my finger blade right in the groove of that first pass. Do it for this other one. And there we go. Now we've trimmed off this little bit. Now since I've got different sizes here, I do want to notate that this is the front and this is the back cover. Okay. And now with this piece right here that measures four inches by 12 inches, we're gonna make a couple other cuts on it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it to eight inches on the 12 inch side. 
And this little bit right here is gonna be our only waist. And then from the piece that we have remaining here that's four inches by eight inches, we're gonna make one cut at one inch. We're gonna scoot it on over and we're gonna make another cut at two and one eighth of an inch. And this is gonna be for our two spines and our little over flap here. So this first spine right here is one inch wide. This one here is one and an eighth inches wide. And this piece here is just what remains, which happens to be one and seven eighths of an inch wide. So we'll free our one inch wide piece first. And I'm gonna mark this as one inch, one and one eighth of an inch, and one and seven eighths of an inch. And now I'm gonna free the other two pieces here. And we have all five of our pieces of chipboard cut. We only used one piece of heavyweight chipboard, and this is the only scrap that we have remaining. It's just a cute little four by four square. The next thing we need to do is cut our cardstock to wrap our chipboard with so we can build our album. And I am using the Artisan cardstock in the natural color. And so for the front cover that measures five and seven eighths by eight, you're gonna need a piece of cardstock that measures seven and seven eighths by 10 to wrap that. For the back cover that measures six inches by eight, you're gonna need a piece that is eight by 10 in the cardstock to wrap that. For the one inch spine, I'm gonna need a piece that's four inches by 10 inches to wrap that. For the piece that's one and one eighth, I'm gonna need a piece of cardstock that's four and one eighth by 10 inches to wrap that. And for the little closure flap that measures one and seven eighths of an inch wide into my chipboard, I'm gonna need a piece that measures three and seven eighths by 10 to cover that. Now, with the exception of these two pieces here, the two um, spines, the one that's one inch wide and the one that's one and one eighth of an inch wide, these three here are just gonna be wrapped very simply where I have a one inch overhang all around them. And I am using the lay flat method that was designed by Tamara Merrill. I will have a link to her video as well as one that I have done in the description notes below if you're looking for a little more detailed information. I like to begin with the two spine pieces so that I can place them under my mat and give them a little time to sort of cure flat. So I'm gonna begin with those and I'm placing for the one and one eighth inch wide spine, I'm placing the piece of paper that measures four and an eighth by 10 in my core board here. And then I'm gonna use a one and a half inch spacer on the side and a one inch spacer on the top before placing glue all over the back side of my chipboard, and I'm putting the glue, a very thin bead, really close together. I want a lot of coverage, not a lot of glue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place it down here, right in, kind of nestled, pressed into that corner here of these spacers, so it's perfectly aligned at the center point on my piece of paper. I'm gonna burnish it really well, clean up any glue that may have seeped out around the side of the chipboard. I don't see any on this one, so that's a good thing. Although if it comes out, it's not a problem. Before turning it over, and then I'm gonna run my uh, bone folder right along the very edge of that chipboard from the right side of the paper or the side that we just kind of glued down there. So that's giving me sort of a preliminary crease that I can then come through and fold and burnish very firmly around all four sides. So I'm wrapping that paper around to the back side of the chipboard and I'm giving it a really firm crease with my bone folder as I go along. And once we've folded that all around, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna clip out these little rectangles in all four corners, just following right along those fold lines there. And then I'm gonna go around and clean up those cuts by placing one side behind, wrapping it around to the back side of the chipboard, placing my scissors right up next to the edge of the chipboard and just ever so slightly angling out. So again, just placing my scissors right there and giving it a little cut. And that's just gonna clean up those corners for me and do the opposite side. And then I'm gonna move on to the other sides by placing the little tab in and kind of trimming back against the wings here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and toss all of my little clippings here. And then for these spine pieces, you're not gonna glue these wings down. That's what's gonna attach our front and back covers you know, together to make our album construction. We're simply gonna glue down these two top flaps here. So I'm gonna place a little glue right along the edge of the chipboard and fill in all over the rest of that little tab. Stand it up, bend it over, press it out, clean up any glue that may seep out as you go along. 
I like to run my bone folder right along the edge of that chipboard to just sort of crisp up that edge there. It's looking really nice. Go ahead and do the other side. Stand it up, bend it over, press it out. Clean up any glue that may be coming out. Crisp up that little edge. And then from the right side, I'm gonna take my bone folder again and I'm really gonna accentuate that fold, that sort of crease of that paper down along to the side of the, um, of the chipboard here. And what I'm essentially doing is I'm creating this ridge along here. I think you can see that little ridge. And so I'm making it so that the paper is now flush with the bottom side of the chipboard, not the top. So it's sort of coming around like that. I'm gonna take this piece and slip it under my mat. And that's just gonna give it a little pressure so that it is lying very flat while that glue sort of sets and dries before I go on and wrap my other spine here, my one inch spine in the same way. For the three remaining pieces of chipboard, we're gonna wrap all of them completely. So all four sides are gonna get glued down and I'm gonna show you one and then we'll just finish the other two in the same way. We're gonna begin again with our scoreboard, our paper, but this time we're gonna do two of the one inch spaces and we're gonna omit the one and a half inch spacer altogether. Place glue all over the back side of your chipboard, stick it down, give it a nice firm burnishing and clean up any glue that may have seeped out. From the right side, go ahead and run your bone folder along the edge of the chipboard, creating that preliminary crease before standing it up and bending it over on itself and really accentuating that fold. I'm giving it a very firm, crisp crease there on that fold on all four sides. And I cut out all four of my squares in each corner. Go ahead and finesse those cuts in the same way, giving it the slightest little angle. And that's not necessarily to miter it. We are gonna miter this afterwards. It's to clean up these little notches that sort of end up in the corners. This finesse cut is more for the uh, the place where the cardstock sort of comes in contact with the chipboard there at the very inner portion of those corners and not for the outer portion that's going to wrap around. And then once all those cuts are made, I like to do a little extra step and that is I like to go ahead and miter the corners and this is more to reduce the bulk. The original little finesse cuts that we did was not so much to miter the corners, but like I said, it was more to clean up that sort of center section um, that comes really close to the chipboard. And once you've mitered and done those initial cuts, you end up with a piece like this. So you have a mitered corner with a little notch out of it. And that's what's gonna make it so that when we wrap these around, we have perfect corners every time, but we don't have a whole lot of bulk in those areas as well. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and so now this is really simple. We're gonna follow the same steps we did for the wings where we glued the top and the bottom down, except this time we're gonna glue all four sides down. So we're gonna begin with that one, this one, and I don't know why, I like to do opposite sides. It's not necessary, I'm just a creature of habit and I like to do it that way. But as long as you're wrapping it around and sticking it down, that's all that matters. And now we're gonna glue down these side pieces as well. Again, running the glue right up next to the chipboard. If you want to use dry adhesive, you can. I prefer using wet glue for my album construction. But even if you use dry adhesive, I do suggest that you run that bead of glue right up next to the chipboard, go ahead and run some wet glue up there because there's something about the moisture of the wet glue that um, I think helps with the fold around here and it helps to make sure that those edges are just really crisp and clean. I hope you can see that. It's a great wrap on the edge. And I really do think the secret to doing that and getting them really crisp is that little bit of, um, of liquid adhesive. <laughs> It sort of softens those fibers right up there next to the chipboard. It also prevents it from buckling, which I think is really important. You don't want it to start kind of pulling away from the chipboard at any point. And there you have it. We have wrapped this piece of chipboard with our paper. I'm gonna go ahead and slip it under my mat as well and just sort of let it dry flat. We're gonna move on to the front and back cover to wrap them in the same way. And I'll fast forward this part. I'm just gonna you know, start with the same thing. I've got my paper down. I've got my spacers in. I'm gonna put glue on my chipboard. We're gonna stick it down, trim it up, wrap it around, glue it around the back, and I will meet you once I get all of those adhered and wrapped.
wrapped all of our pieces of chipboard with our cardstock, we're gonna lay them out in the order that they need to be sort of attached to each other. So we've got the front piece here, and in between the front and the back, we're gonna place the one inch spacer, you know, little section here for the spine. You're gonna put down the front piece. We've got the one inch spine, the back piece, the one and one eighth inch spine, and then this little front sort of overlay piece that's gonna close up onto itself. So it's gonna be attached in this order. And just so that I don't get, you know, <laughs> I don't get confused on the order that they need to be attached in, I'm gonna begin by attaching the um, front piece to the one inch spine. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them over. And you want this to be attached on the left hand side if you're looking at the front side of your front cover. And you want it on the left hand side. Now it, this first piece doesn't matter because you can flip it around, but I think it's good to just get in the habit of putting them in the right order. <laughs> just, just so, you know, just because. And my glue bottle's a little clogged up, so I'm gonna switch over to this one. I'm placing a bead of glue all along the edge here, about a 16th to an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And then I'm using my thumbnail to sort of draw back any, if it has gotten kind of too close to that edge piece. And then on one of the sides over here, I'm gonna place glue about a quarter of an inch away from the chipboard edge on one of these wings, and then fill in all the rest of that area with glue. Again, not a lot of glue, but a lot of coverage. And once all of that is in place, you're simply going to take your, uh, your cover piece, my front cover piece, and I'm gonna butt it up right next to the chipboard on that spine piece. I'm right next to it. I'm pressing down to make sure I've got good contact all along there. I'm gonna take a bone folder and really press from the right side before turning it over and really pressing from the wrong side here as well. And I wanna make sure that I'm not pressing any of the glue into that junction between the two and really working it out more towards the center portion of this uh, of the cover piece. I open it up just a little bit to check and make sure that I didn't have any glue seeping in between there and I didn't, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it one last time before placing a clamp at the top and the bottom just to hold it in place long enough for me to get glue on the next piece. I'm gonna take my back piece and I'm again, I'm placing glue all along one of the edges, one of the eight inch long edges here, about a 16th to an eighth of an inch away from the edge, using my thumbnail to clean any back if it's you know a little too close. While the clamps are still on there, I'm gonna come over here about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the chipboard on this wing piece, and then fill in the remainder area with glue, making sure that I've got a nice, even, but thin bead going all over that area. Once I've got the glue in place, I can take off my clamps and go ahead and lay this one right up next to the chipboard of that spine piece, of that one inch spine piece, really pressing it into place, making sure that I'm flush at the top and bottom and I'm coming right up next to that chipboard there. Turn it over, give it a nice firm burnishing from this side. Check to make sure I didn't have any seep in. I didn't, my glue looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more clamps on this. Now I'm gonna let that sort of dry for a bit and we're gonna go ahead and add one side onto um, to this other little spine piece here. This is the one and an eighth inch wide spine and this is the little flap that's gonna come over to help close up our album. So let's go ahead and place glue all along one of these edges. Again, a 16th to an eighth of an inch from the edge. Clean up any as needed. Place glue almost a quarter of an inch away from the edge of that chipboard here on the wing and fill it all in. Let the two edges of chipboard up next to each other, making sure I'm flush at the top and the bottom. Burnish it. Clean up any glue that may seep out around the edges. And if you get some glue in that little joint in there, just wipe it off as quickly as you can with a microfiber cloth and you should be good to go. And I go ahead and burnish over that again. I had a little dollop in there. Take a couple more clamps and just clamp right there at that junction just to hold them nice and flat. And now that this one has been sitting there for a minute, let's go ahead and take these clamps off and you can see we've got our spine attached to our front and back cover. I have marked where the front and the back are and that's important for me because my front piece, remember, is an eighth of an inch narrower than my back piece. 
and this piece here gets attached onto the back piece like that. So it needs to be front, one inch spine, back, one and an eighth inch spine, and then this little, you know, flap, this little closure flap. So I like to lay it out like this first so I can see the order it needs to go in before turning it over so I can tell which piece needs to go down. So I wanna go ahead and place my glue all along this portion of the back cover before making sure that I've got my, my little flap over here on this side. I'm gonna come in about a quarter of an inch from the chipboard, fill in the rest of this wing piece. And then we're simply gonna butt up those two edges of chipboard right next to each other, just like we have in all of the other connections that we just made. Making sure I'm right up next to it, really burnish it down very well before turning it over and burnishing from the back side. Make sure I don't have any glue in there. I don't, that looks really good. I'm gonna give it one more burnishing before putting some clamps on. And now I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on some pieces that we're gonna attach to cover all of these junctions here that we just attached. So I have a couple pieces of cardstock here that measure five and a half inches wide by just shy of eight inches tall. And that's because I want them to fit just inside of this kind of parameter, top and bottom of my album without any overhang. So I'm coming in like maybe a 16th of an inch shorter, maybe even not quite that. And these pieces are gonna cover up our little junctions here where we attached the covers to the spine. Now, the reason I chose to cut these five and a half inches wide is because I have a score sheet here that measures eight and a half by 11 inches wide and that way I can get both of them on there. And so that was just what determined the width. They don't have to be five and a half inches wide. I just suggest that you make them wider than these wings, where these wings land. I used to make them the same width as that. And I noticed that there was quite a ridge there where that paper ended. I think if you come out just a little bit beyond it, it sort of helps to transition that so you don't get quite a defined bump there. And when attaching these, I just peel back a corner of my backing on my score sheet, position my paper in that exposed corner, bringing it down the edge here. And I wanna try to get it on here as straight as possible, but you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it just gets a little crooked. I think that was pretty good. And then on this one, I'm just going to butt it up right next to that one. So I've got the same, you know, same positioning there. And then all I need to do is trim this off. I'd like to use my um, finger blade and I just run it right along the edge of that cardstock to trim off that adhesive, just like that. Oops. There we go. Just like that. And once we've got the adhesive on there, make sure you burnish it really well. You don't want any air bubbles between your adhesive sheets and the paper. You wanna make sure that it's all the way smoothed down. Take off our clamps here. And then I'm just dry fitting to begin with. I'm just making sure I can feel the edge of my paper that it's not going beyond the top and the bottom of my album here. And I'm just kind of laying this out the way I want it to be. I think that's all looking really good. Go ahead and peel back a corner of your backing for your adhesive so that's exposing the, the sticky part of your adhesive. Get it positioned just where you want it to be. Go ahead and press down that corner and then you can easily peel back the rest of the backing and sort of lay it down into place before burnishing it really well. Repeat the same thing for the other piece. Make sure you burnish it really well. And now we're gonna kind of work in between those joints so that we can create a fold. So I'm, I'm running my bone folder right along that junction between the two pieces of chipboard and ever so slightly increasing the angle of my cover until I can get to the point where I can actually lay it all the way over on itself and really burnish it. Come to the other side of that spine doing the same thing. I'm just running that bone folder right along in that junction, working it and just keep easing it into place before bending it all the way over, giving it a firm burnishing. So we've now got this one like this. Let's move on to this other one. Same thing, right along the edge of that spine Bend it on over, give it a nice firm burnishing, and then let's work the last little junction here. Bend it over, really press it out. And there we have our 
cover built and I think it looks really great. We've got this nice little overlap here. I'm glad that I reduced the length of this. I think it's just a more custom fit. I think it looks really nice. So now before I set this aside, I wanna go ahead and attach my magnets. And on the other one, I used three of the large basic gray magnets. I only have one set of the basic gray magnets remaining. I wish I had more of these magnets. I don't. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this one in the center for now. And then I will add these smaller magnets over some of the, you know, initial layers of paper and we'll sort of make up the difference for that. So to begin, I just want to find my center point right here on my, my flap piece. So I'm laying it out here on my mat. I'm going to come down. I'm going to expose the sticky part of one side of my magnets. I'm going to come down to the four inch mark and I'm going to come about halfway in the middle of this, um, of this flap over piece. And then we'll take the corresponding one, let it find itself, peel off the backing. And on this part, just make sure that you've got it lined up right where you want it to be before sort of pressing that into place. And that magnet will catch just where it needs to be. And if you're concerned and you just wanna make sure that it's you know really down and in place, you can always go back over the top of it with a little piece of double-sided tape. So now we have our album all, you know, ready to kind of go together here. I do need to put those other magnets here on the side and that'll keep it together so it's not, you know, flopping out. Um, but I wanna wait until I put some more paper down because I don't have the large magnets. I only have the small magnets, so I don't want it to carry through so many layers of paper. I hope that makes sense. So now let's move on to our cover pieces for our album. Let's go ahead and, and uh, get all of that covered on the front in the back and the spines. So for the matting pieces for this album, I'm using some kind of fun paper here. This is a My Colors cardstock paper and it is the and it is called Burly Wood. And if you can tell, there's like a, a shimmer shine over it. It's almost a little sparkly. And I thought it would be a really nice little compliment to the, um, the pattern that we have, the pattern paper that we have. And so I have cut these measurements here. For the front piece, I've got a piece that's five and 13 sixteenths by seven and 15 sixteenths. I know, you guys, I like to do things right up to the edge. I'm pulling this off 16th of an inch inch measurements increments um if you're more comfortable with eighth of an inch that's totally fine i just like the look of this very slight reveal all the way around there with the white i think it's a really nice crisp clean look and so that's why i've cut these to this i'm going to give you all the measurements that i cut and there will be an accompanying cutting guide that you can cut from but feel free to make it your own feel free to cut these however you like you don't have to do as many layers of matting it's just my personal preference so that's my that's my little disclosure there. so for the front piece for the bottom piece of my matting layer, I have a piece that is five and three sixteenths by seven and fifteen sixteenths. For the back piece, I have a piece that's five and fifteen sixteenths by seven and fifteen sixteenths. For this little flap covering here, I have a piece that is one and thirteen sixteenths by seven and fifteen sixteenths. For the one and an eighth inch spine, I have one that is cut one and an eighth by seven and fifteen sixteenths. And for the one inch spine, I have one that is cut one by seven and 15 sixteenths. And the reason that those weren't cut any smaller is because with this late flat method, the way this works, you end up with some, um, it's almost, it appears like it's wider than it really is. So these little side pieces here, they extend that white area out. So I went ahead and cut this to the exact same size as the chipboard. And that way, you know, it appears like it's centered, it appears correctly. Um, it's kind of an optical illusion, I guess. And so it just makes it look more even when you do it that way. So that's why I've cut those. And then the matting pieces on top of them, I cut them a quarter of an inch smaller than the measurements. So for the front piece that is gonna go on top, and this is out of the Artisan Craft colored cardstock. So for this front piece, it is five and five eighths by seven and three quarters. So that's just gonna sit on there just like that. For the back piece, it's five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. For the closure flap, I have a piece that's one and five eighths by seven and three quarters. And for the two spine pieces, I have one that's one by seven and three quarters. And I have another one that is seven eighths of an inch by seven and three 
three quarters. And those are gonna sit right on top of there like that. Now the decorative paper that I'm using is from this sheet here. I just think it's so pretty. I love this window with the birds and this climbing roses. I think it's really pretty. And so that's gonna be layered right on top like this for our front piece. And then um, I've got another piece here for the back. But for the sides, I wanna use some of these cut aparts. So I wanna use these Easter eggs on one of the spines. I wanna use these nice spring sentiment words here on another one of the spines. And then I haven't quite decided what I wanna do for a decorative element here on our closure. We'll get to that um, here in a little bit, but that's where I am so far. I'm just gonna layer these up, glue them in place, and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and cut another layer of cardstock because I feel like it just needed that white to kind of come around there and sort of pop that up a little bit. Um, so yeah, this is a lot of layers of matting. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want. I am layering up my bottom three layers first, then I'm gonna attach more magnets before coming over with this top layer because then I only have one piece of paper for that magnet to carry that load through. And I just think it's gonna be a little bit more secure that way. So that's how I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna attach the, the third matting piece down here first. And then we're gonna attach this whole thing as a unit onto our cover, our album cover here. Kind of scooch it, I'm a little crooked there. There we go, looks good. And now let's go ahead and glue that down. I'm gonna peel back my backing here. Let's go ahead and glue it onto our cover. I'm just easing that into place, making sure that I've got an even reveal all around. And that looks good. Go ahead and burnish it down really well, especially on the edge here where that magnet is underneath. It's gonna wanna try to pull up. So you just wanna make sure that you're applying some firm pressure along there until it starts to catch. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and burnish all over the rest of it. I really like the sparkle of that brown paper. I think it's super pretty. And now I want to attach some magnets. So. I've got my smaller magnets over here somewhere. Um, and so I'm just gonna take a few and expose the adhesive backing here. Thinking about there. And I'm actually gonna put four sets along here just because I really think it needs three large ones. And since I don't have the three large ones, I'm gonna do one large one and then the you know four sets of, I'm basically replacing two um, two sets of magnets for each of the ones that I don't have available to put down. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I peeled off the backing to expose the adhesive and then I'm just gonna let the magnet find itself. That first magnet that we already put down is just gonna find where it needs to go and then peel these back. And we now have our magnets in place where they need to be. And now I can go ahead and put on my decorative front cover piece using my card, uh, my uh, pattern paper. So I'm placing some glue all along the backside here. Make sure I've got some on there. And then this piece is just gonna sit right on top of here. Kind of scooch it into place, get it right where we want it to be, and then burnish it down. And there we go, we've got our front cover in place and my magnets keep wanting to pull up. So I just put a little more tape to cover the ones that are wanting to pull up, but they are, this is closing up exactly the way I wanted it to. I've got just enough grab here to really place it um, where it needs to be. I love where this image is laying out. I'm really happy with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the pattern paper all on the outside of my album and I'll be right back.
my cover on here. I've got it all decorated up, but I can't really decide what I want to put over um, these spine pieces. I had originally thought I would do this on one of them, but I don't really think that's going to be the color that I want it to be. And I do like the, um, the Easter eggs on here, maybe on this one, maybe on this one, I'm not sure, but I'm not totally in love with this. I don't know yet. I kind of like it with that natural color artisan cardstock, just sort of that being plain, but I, I tend to gravitate towards plain things. I love the three layers of matting behind it. I'm obsessed with that. I think it looks great. And on this one, I chose not to do that ruffle with the, um, you know, ribbon around on the closure. I just didn't think it really needed it. But yeah, I'm liking the way this is coming together. I'm going to wait to decide what I want to put on here to decorate on these spine pieces, if anything at all. And we're going to move on to the next steps in the interim, okay? So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put my pattern paper on my front and back inside covers. And I'm also going to um, cover my paper on the inside of this portion of the spine and this portion of the spine. This one is actually where our pages are going to be attached. I'm not going to put anything on there yet, but I want to go ahead and finish off this inside because that's just kind of the next step to do. So let's get started on that. And for the inside, I just love this stripe. I think it's really pretty. And I only want to, you know, I'm going to cut from one piece of this cardstock. I don't want to cut into a second one. Okay, I think I'm going to do the stripe on the background. Now, when I cut um, my papers to wrap my album with, I had to cut some of them to eight inches. And that left me with these four inch by 12 inch cutoffs here. And so we're actually going to use that to make our pockets with. I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to cut it in half at six inches on the 12 inch side giving me two pieces that are four by six. I'm gonna go ahead and place them in my scoreboard and we're gonna score them at a half an inch on the six inch side and a half an inch on the four inch side. And on the second one, you're gonna score it at five and a half inches on the six inch side and three and a half inches on the four inch side. Go ahead and fold and burnish your score marks. And then I'm gonna trim my uh, my corners here. Where these two folds intersect and there's that little section right there, I'm gonna fold one side behind and place my scissors right there at the intersection of that fold and clip out. And then I'm gonna place the other side behind, go back into that same intersection with my scissors and clip out again. And that's gonna give me a nice little miter here on my pocket. I'm gonna do that for the other one. And then I'm going to mark from the fold sides here. I'm gonna mark over one inch. I'm gonna come down one inch from the fold and I'm gonna come up one inch from this fold. I'm gonna make marks on both of them in the same way. And then sort of connecting the dots, the two tick marks are gonna line up against my cutting edge on my trimmer. And once I've got them both lined up, I'm just gonna drop my blade. And that's gonna give me a nice little angle pocket here. Now this one's gonna be for the, the back of my album. And now we have these sort of bookend angle pockets here. So they're going to be inserted into our album just like this. We're gonna have one on the front inside cover and one on the back inside cover just like that. I wanna go ahead and cut my back paper um, that's gonna be you know, on, the, on my front and back inside cover because I'm gonna wrap these little pockets around the edge of that so I don't have anything that would get snagged on anything when you're putting stuff into the pocket. I'll show you what I mean. So I've got my pieces here that are gonna fit just inside of my front and back inside covers. This one here is like seven and 15 16 by five and 15 16. This one here is five and three quarters of an inch wide by you know, that, that little scant eight inches here on the height. And so those are gonna sit in there just like that. I'm really happy with the way they look. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the corresponding pockets and we're gonna place them on this paper in that lower corner, whichever corner they kind of correspond to here. And you're gonna press it all the way into that corner, making sure that I'm all the way up against the edge on this piece, as well as on the edge on this piece here. And when you sort of fold them down, it'll kind of wrap around there. I wanna place some glue on the back side of these flaps. And again, I'm placing them, I'm pressing it right up against the edge on both sides. And then I'm just gonna fold these flaps over right around the edge of that paper. Go ahead and burnish it really well. 
And now there's nothing that's gonna snag on anything when you're putting it in because the paper is gonna smooth all the way down into that corner and it makes a really nice finish on there. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna position this on this back inside, um, you know, the inside back cover of our chipboard. We're gonna place glue all over the back side of these flaps as well as the back side of our pattern paper. And I like to make sure I've got some on this flap here first. And then we're just gonna nestle it in here, right in that sort of chipboard section, making sure that, you know, I'm not hitting anything on these sides here. I'm, I've got some freedom of movement there. Make sure I'm positioned right where I want it to be. Let's just scooch it down just a little bit. Burnish it really well. Clean up any glue that may have seeped out. And on this, uh, side here there's not much I can do to clamp this but on this lower section I can so I do want to go ahead and put some clamps on there I'm gonna take um, a couple of rulers and just like scraps of some chipboard that I've got and I'm gonna place on there because I don't want the clamps to leave a mark um, so I've got let me show you so I've got a ruler on one side and a piece of chipboard on the other side and now I'm gonna place my clamps on over that and that's just gonna make sure that um, the uh, the pressure is distributed across there, so I'm not gonna end up with a specific dent mark on there. Go ahead and set this aside for a second. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with this paper. I wanna slide this in so that it's all the way into this corner, okay? So I'm gonna really press this into the corner of my paper, make sure that I can fold around there easily, place some glue on the back side of these flaps, and then again, making sure it's all the way in there, right where I want it to be. Fold these flaps on over and burnish them down really well. Go ahead and place glue all over the back side of the flaps as well as the back side of the pattern paper. And go ahead and pull these clamps off. And then we're gonna position this one down in that lower left-hand corner. I'm coming all the way to the edge there in that corner. And that's just gonna line up my paper perfectly so I have a perfect reveal all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it down really well. You have any glue that might have seeped out. And I wanna put some more clamps on this one. And now that those have sat there for a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the clamps off. And I've got a really nice tight, you know, adhesion on here. It's just right where I want it to be. And so now I've cut a couple pieces of this rose paper that's so pretty. And I'm gonna go ahead and put them over to cover our magnets and to cover this other spine. So I'm just gonna glue them down very quickly. All right, now I've got my pattern paper on there and I have kind of gone around and sort of sculpted around the magnets with my paper. So it's, it's really stuck down around those magnets. Yes, you can see the magnets. I find that if I do that, my magnets work better. I'm sort of exposing the magnet more. I'm not trying to necessarily hide it. It has a job to do. It doesn't bother me that I can see the profile of them. They do their job um, and that makes me happy. And so that's how I like to do it. If you want to, you know, sort of float them in between your pieces of paper, you're welcome to do that. I have just found that if you have some problems with them sticking, if you kind of go around, you know, the paper, and allow them to protrude up the way they want to, they do their job a little bit better. So just my little my little opinion for, you know, what do I know? <laughs> and I was thinking I wanted to add this paper here on their, you know, over the, um, over these pockets. So I'd kind of have this sticking out there, but I like the way these roses look with the stripes. So instead, I'm just gonna go back to using some more of this rose paper. I think it looks great. So let's finish up with that. And the paper itself is supposed to be oriented this way where the stripes are going, you know, top to bottom. But I, um, I've kind of jumped the gun here. I've already cut my pages that I need and it's out of this paper. So I had this little, you know, strip, this little cutoff strip over here, which is what I used for these. So just for some consistency, I'm going to continue to have that, you know, that line moving horizontally and I think it's going to be just fine. So I need to cut a strip across here that's five and three eighths of an inch high and that's going to be to cover our pockets here on each of these. And now rather than measuring and cutting I just like to lay it out on top of my pocket. Take a pencil and I'm just going to make little tick marks where I need to 
you know, cut it. And I will have measurements in the cutting guide, but I don't really follow measurements. That's more for you guys because, you know, people have asked for it. I, you know, I start with kind of a basic measurement and then I always trim to fit. So this is sort of my process of trimming to fit. So I make my little tick marks here. Go ahead and connect those two marks to create my angle cut. And now I know this piece is going to fit on here perfectly. And I just, I like the fit. If I follow the, um, <laughs> the mathematical cutting guide, sometimes I make mistakes. And um, so I have found that I just like to trim it to fit. So the measurements will be on the cutting guide if you prefer that. But if not, you can just always sort of hold it down there, make your little tick marks, cut it. And I think it works great. That in place, go ahead and burnish it down. Lay out the other piece and make my marks and my cuts in the same way. And there we have it. We now have our inside of our album all covered and decorated. We've got our pockets in place and we've got our outside of our album almost covered and decorated. I haven't quite decided what I want to do for this. If anything, we'll kind of, you know, play that by ear as we go along. And so now we're ready to move on to the really interesting part of this tutorial. And in this part, I'm going to show you how I make the stitched signatures and how I stitch the signatures into the spine for our sort of faux hinge attachment. This does not have any hinges, but we've got three signatures that are going to be stitched in there and it's really cool. So let's move on to that part now. So to begin with, I have nine pieces of pattern paper that I have cut down to seven and three quarters of an inch tall by 12 inches wide. And you need to make sure that they are oriented. So on the, the seven and three quarters of an inch tall, that's the, you know, uh, vertical orientation for your printed paper. So if you have directional paper, you want the up and down to be seven and three quarters of an inch tall and the width to be 12 inches wide. So I've got nine pieces of pattern paper that are cut down to those measurements. And I've got three pieces that are also seven and three quarters of an inch tall by 12 inches wide that I cut out of the artisan cardstock. And for all 12 pieces, three of, uh, three of them are the artisan cardstock and nine of them are the pattern paper. We're gonna place them in our scoreboard and you're gonna score them in half on the 12 inch side at six inches. And then you're also gonna make a score mark an eighth of an inch on either side of that six inch mark. So I'm gonna score it at five and seven eighths, six and six and one eighth, okay? So five and seven eighths, six and six and one eighth. And I'm gonna do that for all 12 of these pieces. Again, there's three of the artisan cardstock at five and seven eighths, six and six and one eighth, and nine pieces of the pattern paper, again, scored at five and seven eighths, six and six and one eighth. And I'm gonna do that for all of them. And once we've scored all of our pieces of paper, you are gonna fold them mountain valley mountain on all of these 12 pieces. Let's use one of the pieces of cardstock. Maybe you can see it a little bit better without the pattern on Go there. ahead and fold it in half first. And so, um, that's just gonna sort of activate that middle score mark there. So I'm folding it all the way over in half and establishing that before then opening it up. And if I take my fingernails and I put them on the score marks on the sides and sort of begin that fold on one of the sides, I'm lining up this, you know, this edge with the other edge underneath there. And then I'm able to sort of press that up, okay? going to open it back up again and do the same thing on the other side. I'm putting my fingernails on that score mark to sort of establish a, a point that it's going to fold at. Bring it over. I'm lining this up here and then go ahead and smooth that out again. So now all I need to do is just line up my edges again and take my bone folder and just crease it back and forth over this just like that. And now I've got my little groove in here, my little accordion fold groove that I've created that is, you know, somewhat like a letter M, like a tiny little letter, letter M. It's just mountain valley mountain there in that. This is how we're going to put our signatures together. These fold lines here are going to help us do a couple things. It's going to help us establish, you know, the, the marks that we need to create our holes for our stitching. And it's also going to establish a way for us to create some stitching that we can then use to stitch it into the album. And I know I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but just wanted you to know that this is important portion here is the folding aspect of that. I've got all my pieces of paper folded here in the same way. 
and I need to put them into groupings of three booklets. And so the only thing that you really have to worry about on this is making sure that your orientations are the same. You know, these are um, directional papers, so I need to make sure that I've got my tops in the right places on them. And there are going to be three pieces of paper. See, that one's upside down. <laughs> and there's gonna be three pieces of pattern paper in each signature with one piece of the cardstock on the outside of it. And that's what's gonna create our signature bundles like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other two together. And now that I've got my three signature bundles together, it's time for us to start making some holes in our um, in the spines of our signature so we can do some stitching. Now I have posted this before. I bought this tool on Amazon. I know I posted about it and kind of the whole kit that I had that came with it. I have since found out that that kit is no longer available and these are separate purchases. So I'm not gonna use this right now because I wanna make sure that you have access to the right tools to use. Just know that there are specific book binding spacing tools available. Um, this is one that was in my stash. I know that they're available at other, you know, places. Um, if I had a link to how to purchase the one I did, I would, or, you know, the one I have, I would link it. Um, but I don't have the, it's not available anymore like that. So, um, you would just need to look for some sort of, you know, book binding tool if you're wanting to go that route, or I'm going to show you another way to do that here today where you don't have to, you don't have to do that. So we're going to make a jig. We're going to make a template to use for our book binding to punch our, um, our holes here. So let's get started on that. So we're gonna make a template here and you can either use a scrap piece of cardstock. This just happens to be a 110 pound, you know, piece of scrap cardstock that I had in my stash, or you can use a piece of scrap chipboard. I'm gonna use the chipboard today because I feel like it's a more sturdy and reusable tool. We're gonna make this, you know, this jig, this template, and I'd like to be able to use it again and again. You know, I'd like to be able to use it more than once. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna lay it out on my mat and I'm gonna make a line at the center point of this. It's happened to be two inches wide by eight inches long so I'm just coming right straight down the center point here at uh, one inch and then I want to come over an eighth of an inch on either side of this line and make another line for the second row of holes on either side of that line so I've made a, a line right at the very center point at one inch over and then I'm making another line an eighth of an inch to one side of the line and I'm gonna make another line an eighth of an inch to the other side of the line, just like that. So I've got my three lines here that are gonna to correspond to the three places that I need to punch holes for my signatures. Now I wanna make a series of, of marks all the way down here so that I know where those holes need to be punched. I'm gonna start three quarters of an inch down from the top here. So I'm gonna come over three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna make a line all the way across my template just like that. I'm gonna come down another three quarters of an inch, make another line all the way across my template, and then I'm gonna come down an inch and a quarter. I know these measurements are all weird. It's just how I sort of lined it out. So you can do these evenly spaced however you want. Um, this is just how I'm doing it. So I'm now an inch and a quarter down. And then I'm gonna come another inch and a quarter. I'll make another line across here. I'm gonna come another inch and a quarter, another inch and a quarter, and then three quarters of an inch. And what that gives me is it gives me three quarters, my, my stitching is gonna begin three quarters of an inch from the top and the bottom, okay? Then there'll be another stitch at three quarters of an inch in from that. And then these are all spaced one and a quarter apart. And the reason I did that is I want a little bit closer stitching at the top and the bottom and the longer stitching through the middle to sort of carry the weight better. Um, it's not necessary. If you wanna just do even spacing on it, you can. This is just what I found works for me, and so that's what I'm gonna do. At each one of these junctions where you have a pencil mark crossing the line of another pencil mark, each one of those places, we're gonna punch a hole. I'm gonna use an awl if you want to. You can use a pokey tool. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do. I don't want to use a hole punch because the hole's going to be too large. I don't want it to be a giant hole. I just want it to be big enough for me to be able to punch another pokey hole, you know, pokey tool through so that I can actually, you know, make my holes through to my paper. So I'm just pressing it through. Be careful not to, you know, nick your fingers. And I'm just going straight through where those, um, 
where those junctions are and they're going to be close together so you're going to be careful not to like you know mark them on each other so i'm just going to continue to go through press my little um all through my chipboard making my holes i think these were a little bit too large don't make them so big these smaller ones are going to be just fine and i'm just going to continue to make my little holes right through at each of those intersections of those lines that i just drew and there we go. We now have our holes drawn all the way down there and that's where we want to poke our holes for our stitching. So now the next step is going to be to open up our booklets. And again, we've got this weird little kind of fold that pokes up in there and that's that's just great. That's what we want it to have. But I wanna go ahead and smooth this out. We had to do the folding so that we would sort of know where that was gonna be. But now it's time for us to sort of smooth this out and it will fold right back where we want it to be as soon as we're done with poking our holes. We just need to kind of fold it first so that the fibers sort of have a memory of where they're gonna go back to. We also folded it so we could see the lines that we need to poke our holes on. It's just almost, you know, training the paper that that's what we want it to do. So now that we've got all of our pieces to our booklet together, we're gonna line them up Make sure they're perfectly lined up here. And I like to take a couple clamps and just hold them in place so that the papers aren't gonna, you know, slip around and wiggle or anything on me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put those in place there. Now this piece here was eight and, or just eight inches tall and I needed that to have even spacing. These pages are seven and three quarters. So you're not gonna center this top to bottom. You need each one of them to line up correctly. So I'm gonna actually notate that this is the top even though they're supposed to be spaced out evenly, just to make sure that's the top. And I'm gonna line it up on here so that these three lines, these three pencil lines are gonna to correspond to the three, um, you know, the three folds that we have here on our paper. And sometimes if you stand it up, you can sort of see those folds better. So I've got that lined up right there. I'm gonna put a clamp on it. I'm gonna turn it around to the other side and just kind of getting that lined up, go ahead and put a clamp on it. And now I can easily go through and make my little punctures three to a row here, all the way down. And I'm just poking it through all the layers of the paper. I have my hand back here. I'm careful not to poke my fingers. I've got them out of the way. And I'm just pressing down it doesn't take a lot of pressure if you're using a you know fairly sharp awl here. I'm just gonna continue to press down into there so I can make my little marks. Okay, and now we'll take off our clamps and we have our perfectly spaced holes that are all running along these fold marks on our booklet here. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna do that for all of them. So now I've got an upholstery needle or just, you know, maybe a large eye needle, maybe a darning needle. You just need something that is nice and sturdy with a large eye on it. I've got some upholstery thread here. Um, this just happens to be a, let's see, it's a bonded nylon. Doesn't really matter, but it is a, a nice sturdy upholstery thread. And I'm gonna get a link that is two and a half times the height of my booklet here. So I'm just, you know, kind of laying it out here and I'm gonna go about two and a half maybe a little bit more than two and a half. Flip my thread there and thread your needle. And then you're gonna begin on the inside here and I'm gonna do the middle stitching first. So I'm gonna go all the way up on the middle stitching. So I'm just gonna come in through my little hole, making sure my pages are all lined up. These first few stitches, the pages might shift a little bit, but once you get a couple in, they stay right where they need to be. And then I'm gonna take a piece of tape. I've just got some repositionable tape you can, um, you know, use a, a sticky note or something. You don't want anything that's gonna rip your paper, but I'm just gonna hold my tail there with that tape just for now. Then go ahead and grab up my signature again. And I'm just gonna come back in. I'm gonna do a running stitch up and a running stitch down right through the center, um, the center set of holes here. You can also put some clamps on it, you know, or leave the clamps on that you had before on the sides just to hold it in place if you're, if you want but I'm just gonna go out and then in and out and then in, and I'm gonna go all the way up that way. And because I have an odd number of holes, when I start bringing that running stitch back down, I'm going to be able to you know, have stitches where there aren't any. So right now the running stitch up, you see a running stitch here, 
here and here, but there's nothing on these other spots. When I start coming back down, that's gonna fill in the stitching in the other direction. The only thing you have to be careful of is make sure you don't split the stitch. And what I mean is when you put the needle back through, make sure you're not catching the thread. You're not coming between the thread when you do that. So I do like to sort of pull the thread to the side as I'm doing that. So on this one, I'm gonna grab this stitching here and I wanna pull it to the side as I place my needle in just like that, so that I'm not accidentally splitting that thread with my stitch. I hope that makes sense. So then once again, I'm gonna do the same thing here, pulling my, I'm pulling my thread aside. I don't wanna catch this on that thread. Slipping my needle through, giving it a little tug, go back out, back in. And now I've, I've ended here at the bottom. I'm ending at this, the hole just above the bottom hole. I began by going out through the hole at the bottom. And so now I have these two pieces of um, thread here and I'm just gonna tie them off into a square knot. And I'm gonna trim these tails to be about the same length, doesn't really matter. I'm also gonna continue to just um, leave the tape on them just to keep them out of the way. We're gonna secure them with a piece of ephemera when we're completely done, but we're just not to that point yet. So now we have this center stitch all the way through and I think it looks really great. Now we're gonna work on making the sort of ladder stitching that's gonna go between these two sets of holes all the way up. And that's gonna give us a loop by which we can attach it to our album. And this time I'm gonna do about three times the height of my, um, of my folio here. Go ahead and thread your needle. Once again, we're gonna begin at the bottom and I'm gonna come in through the lower right hand um, hole there, okay, or go out through it actually. I'm coming from the inside to the outside. I'm gonna take this tail and secure it with the others with my tape there. And now I'm gonna come across to this other hole on the other side, come back in, okay? And now I'm gonna take a running stitch up on the left-hand side. I'm gonna cross over again down here I'm gonna take a running stitch up on the right-hand side, cross over to the next hole to, you know, over there. Take a running stitch up on the left side again, cross over just like a ladder stitch right over to that hole. We're gonna take another running stitch up Gonna kind of ladder over. I got my tail stuck in there. <laughs> Running stitch up. Ladder over. Running stitch up. And ladder over. And at this top one, we're gonna take another extra stitch going back in through that same hole of, over there. So I'm gonna make a second ladder stitch over here. So I've got two loops here at this top hole, okay? Go ahead and pull those. And now I'm gonna take a running stitch down. There's no stitch here. So I'm gonna take a running stitch down. Again, being careful not to split my stitch. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on where this, the, uh, the thread is. So I've got a running stitch down. I'm gonna take my second ladder stitch over in this set of holes, just like that. Running stitch down, second ladder stitch over on this set of holes. Running stitch down, second ladder stitch over on this set of holes. Running stitch down, second ladder stitch over, running stitch down. We've got our second ladder stitch over, running stitch down. And on this one, I wanna make another ladder stitch over here because we only have the one from our beginning stitch. So we have a second ladder stitch over there. And then I'm gonna come in through that very center hole or out through the center hole. Oops, I lost my thread. And then back in 
through that original hole that all of our stitching began in for this second set of stitching. Okay, so now what I have is I have on the inside, I have running stitches going up all of the holes. You can see where I've got a little ladder stitch up here at the top and another one down here just because I was trying to catch that a second time. And then on the back side, I have running stitches coming all the way down the center point, but no running stitches on the side. And I have these ladder stitchings coming across all of our holes. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two threads here. We're gonna fold this in half, like, like kind of going the wrong way. So I want these, this is the front and the back cover. I want them touching each other like that. And you're gonna go through and just tighten up all these stitches. So I'm gonna take my thread and I'm just gonna kind of pull tight all of the stitching along here. Sometimes you have to actually like work them down. I think it's easier if you work down from the top so I'm gonna pull on all of my stitches, the running stitches going down either side until I can get them to pull tight. Keep pulling them all the way down. And this little last one down here where we did that kind of double uh, stitch on there, um, you're just gonna to have to pull it tight. You know, you have to loosen up your loops and then kind of pull them all tight like that like that and like that. So I've got those all pulled tight and now when I open it back up again, you can see that these are all kind of brought together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my um, bone folder and just give it another firm crease. And the end result is I have this fold going in there is running stitch on the inside that you're not really gonna see, but I've got all these ladder stitches here, which is what we're gonna to use to attach it into our album, okay? And then on the inside, you just have this kind of neat looking little, um, I don't know, just <laughs> this neat little binding in here. And I don't know if this is an official binding that someone has done. I tend to believe that there's probably really is nothing new under the sun, and I'm sure somebody's done something like this. Um, this is just something I came up with. So if you guys know of somebody who's done this or if this has an official name, let me know in the comments below. I think that it's an original design, but you know, you just never know. Someone's probably bound books together like this at some point a thousand years ago. And you know, who am I? <laughs> I'm just someone who thinks I came up with something. So um, now that I've got that knotted off, I went ahead and, and tied that into a square knot as well. I'm gonna take my tails and just line them over here, go ahead and cover them up with some more tape just to keep them out of the way. Um, I'm gonna trim down these longer ones here. And now this one is completely bound. Our little signature is bound and it's ready to go. Now, what I do like to do is I like to trim these up because I've got an overhang here. You know, that's just the nature of when you're stacking in pages like that. So I'm just gonna line it up here on my mat, take a metal straight edge or a ruler, and I'm just coming right along the edge of my cardstock cover. Take my finger blade. You can do this with an X-Acto knife, a finger blade. You could do this with a trimmer if you want. I don't really have a trimmer that I feel like does a good job on these. If you really start getting into book binding, they have these wonderful uh, paper cutters that you can use for this exact purpose. And so now that this signature is finished, the only other thing I wanna do to it um, is besides a little bit of decorating is I want to go ahead and round all my corners. So I'm just using my little We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder. I'm going to do the four millimeter corner. Just place it in and give it a little, just a little chomp on those corners. It's not much, but it's enough to just make it a little smoother. I like the finish. It's not necessary. You can certainly keep your corners squared off. I think it makes them sort of stay fresh looking longer when you have the rounded corners it's less likely to get dinged up but again it's not necessary and it kind of makes a mess when you do it so <laughs> so there we go that's all taken care of we're going to do some decorating on these but the first thing i want to do is go ahead and finish up the other two signatures so i'm going to punch my holes in the same way using my template stitch it in the same way and put those together and i'll be right back and so as i'm going through here and punching my holes on my second signature i i'm not sure if i mentioned um, that it is important to have an odd number of holes going from top to bottom. That's what's going to make your stitching, you know, that's what's going to make it easy for you to sort of double back on your running stitches, double back on all the stitching that you're doing on here. So if you wanted to do a different hole placement, that's fine, but just make sure that you have an odd number of holes that are going from top to bottom. So in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes 
you know, rows of holes going from top to bottom. I wouldn't want to do it at six and I wouldn't want to do it at eight. I could go up to nine. I could go down to five. You just want to make sure that it's an odd number so that that stitching can be continued. So I've got a piece of string again, that's two and a half times the height you know, the length of it is two and a half times the height of my signature. I'm going to begin with my running stitch coming from the bottom through the center first. So I've got my stitch going out from the center bottom to the outside of my signature, cover up my tail with a little bit of repositionable tape. And then I'm going to take running stitches all the way up through the center. And remember when I said don't catch your, your thread? I just did. I just went through my thread. And so when that happens, just unthread your needle pull the thread back out through that, um, that other, the piece of your upholstery thread that you caught, and then just re-thread your needle and continue on. So it is fixable, it's not a big deal, but it sure does save a lot of time if you're careful not to catch it in the first place. Like right there, I would catch it. So I wanna move the thread to the side so that it's not in the way, place my needle in, and now I'm not catching that thread. I'm not splitting the thread in half with my needle. Um, and it just makes sure that that thread can, can move freely. I just, I don't want to catch it like that. And then once I finish that running stitch there, I'm going to go ahead and free up my other tail. I, you really want to make sure that these are tight. So, you know, if need be, you can always go through and, um, you know, just kind of pull on the running stitches. Make sure that they're nice and tight. Um, because they will loosen up over time and we just want them to be really tight for now. So go ahead and tie your double knot or your square knot. I just don't want it to come out, right? And when you tie a square knot, whichever side you go over the first time is the side that you go under the second time. And that just sort of locks your, um, your knot in place. And now that we've got all three of our signatures stitched together and we've got this really nice looking little um, binding, you know, fastener started with these ladder stitches. Now it's time for us to create something to stitch those onto that we can then glue into our album. And so we're going to need um, for our attachment, how we're going to attach these all on our spine, we're going to need one piece that's two inches wide by seven and three quarters of an inch long. And we need another piece that is seven eighths of an inch wide by seven and three quarters of an inch long. Set this one aside, the one that's seven eighths of an inch wide. And on the one that's two inches wide, place it in your scoreboard on the two inch side, and you're gonna score it at a half an inch and at one and a half inches. And then fold and burnish your score marks. And so once you've folded and burnished it, you end up with a piece that looks like this, where I've got one inch across the front and these two half inch sections here that fold around to the back. And you can either lay it out and use your, you know, template to go ahead and make all your marks and, and puncture your holes. I find that it's a little hard to do the template. You end up getting off a little bit. And for me, it's just easier to use the ruler. The template is great because it's lined out exactly for these eighth of an inch wide sections on either side. But in puncturing the holes on our attachment piece, I want them to be spaced out a quarter of an inch from each other. So I have a one inch wide section here and I want a row of holes that are a quarter of an inch in from this first fold, a quarter of an inch in from the other fold and right down the center at a half an inch in. So that's gonna give me quarter of an inch spacing. This is lined up as an eighth of an inch spacing it's not really gonna work for what I need it to do. So it's just gonna be easier for me to go ahead and come in here and make my marks. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make a mark at the halfway point coming all the way down. So I wanna find the center, you know, of my of my one inch section here. So I'm just lining it out on my mat and I'm gonna make a little tick mark at the half inch mark, another little tick mark down here at the half inch mark. And I'm gonna connect the lines here with my pencil, just like that. And then I want to make my a mark a quarter of an inch on either side of that line and I'm going to make another line here connecting my mark. So I've got a quarter of an inch on either side there I'm going to come over here make a mark a quarter of an inch on either side there and now go ahead and connect those. And so now I've got my evenly spaced marks coming all the way down the front here. Now I can go through and make my marks in the same way as I did these. And so I'm just gonna lay it down, just like when we made our template, I'm gonna lay it down on here. And if you're worried that it's gonna wiggle or something on you, just go ahead and take a couple pieces of your tape and just hold it down so that it's on your mat. And I'm gonna come three quarters of an inch down from the top. And I'm gonna make a little line across those marks I just made. I'm gonna come another three quarters of an inch down from the top 
and make another line across those marks. Now I'm gonna come an inch and a quarter just because that was the spacing I did on the last one. And if you guys wanna do space it differently, you can. Like I said, just make sure that you've got odd um, number of, of holes coming down. Then I'm gonna come down another inch and a quarter, just like that. Another inch and a quarter. So as you can see, my lines are all lining up here with my other template. I could also just hold this down here and do that, but I'm just showing you the measurements. We're gonna come another inch and a quarter down. So that's right here. And then I'm gonna come another three quarters of an inch. Back that off a little bit. And there we go. So um, those are my markings here <laughs> that are in the same positioning as these markings here. So if I were to hold this template up, you can see that these cross marks are all gonna line up. The only difference is, is that my spacing, rather than these being an eighth of an inch apart, they're now a quarter of an inch apart. So now I'm just gonna go through and do the same thing I did when I made the template. I'm just gonna make little holes all along everywhere that those two, um, everywhere that the two pencil marks cross. So everywhere I've got a junction on those two pencil marks. And I probably could have made my marks on the back side, which would have been much smarter. I didn't. So I'm gonna just grab an eraser and I'm gonna clean up all my pencil marks. Well, they're not really cleaning up very well, so I'm actually just gonna refold my, my side pieces to fold back the other way so that my pencil marks are now on the inside. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I just would like it to be a little cleaner, especially because it's white paper, right? <laughs> so now you have a piece that looks like this. I do want to notate where the top is, and that is this part right here, um, because that was the one that's the three quarters of an inch down. So I do want to notate that this is the top. And now we can begin stitching our signatures into here. Now, if you want to do some decorating on them first, you can, but... Um, and I was gonna do that, but I don't think it really matters. I can do that after the fact. I just wanna go ahead and get them stitched in. Um, but make sure that you have your orientation correctly, right? So I notated that this is the top. I need to make sure that this is also, you know, going the right way and that I'm stitching it in the correct way. So now you wanna take a piece of thread that is three times the height. Go ahead and thread your needle and we're gonna begin at the bottom here. So I'm gonna come in I'm gonna come in at the very bottom on the far right-hand side. You can do left, you can do center, however you wanna do it. I'm just choosing to do on the bottom on the right-hand side. I'm gonna take a piece of tape to secure my, um, my tail. My thread's coming in through the bottom here, okay? And then I'm going to come underneath the bottom of this ladder stitch. So as you can see, my, my needle's just slipping in here. And in fact, I think instead of using a straight needle, let's use the curved needle. So I do think it helps a lot. In fact, I think it's almost necessary for you to have one of these curved upholstery needles. So make sure you grab one of those uh, because it's just gonna be a lot easier for you to hook into these ladder stitches here. So we're gonna come in underneath the bottom of that, that bottom ladder stitch and bring the stitch through, okay? You're gonna come back out through that same hole that you just came in through. Then you're gonna take a running stitch up to the next hole in that same row. And it's okay if these are loose for right now, we can tighten them up. It'll make it easier for you to stitch if they're kind of loose right now. And then you're gonna come back underneath the second ladder stitch. So I'm in that little groove that we made, pulling my needle through just like that, okay? I'm gonna go back out through that hole we just came in through. Take another running stitch up to the next hole in that same, in that same row, in the same vertical row that you're in. Just like that. I'm gonna come underneath, boy, my thread's rolling around, sorry about that. You're gonna come underneath that third ladder stitch. So I'm catching those ladder stitches there. There we go. 
go back out through that hole you just came in through. Just like that. And so as you can sort of see, I've got these loops that are coming around here and catching the ladder stitches on my um, on my signature. And on the back side, it's just a, a, a long running stitch that's coming up, okay? So now I'm gonna come back in, take another running stitch back up. Come in like that. Go from an underneath side to the top of my ladder stitch again. I'm just catching my needle right underneath that set of stitching. Just grabbing that back out through the same hole I just came in through. Just be careful not to split your stitch. Oops. Also be careful not to let your needle come unthreaded. <laughs> there we go. Now back out through that same hole you just came in through. And if you want to, you can go back down through and catch each of those ladder stitches again. I don't think it's necessary. I think this is more than secure enough to you know, keep this in place. And so as you can tell, I've got this series of loops that are coming through the back side of this um, piece of cardstock that are, you know, looped around that um, ladder stitch we did on our signatures. And now all I need to do is tighten them up. So I'm going to undo my, um, my tape here and I'm just going to start tugging at this. Go ahead and start pulling it really tight. You want to make sure that it's really tight on there. Everything looks good. I just want it to be really tight and then I'm just going to bring this on down, tie it off down here in a square knot. Now, if your signatures are more than, you know, more pages than these are. So these are like, they begin with four pieces of paper folded in half, making a total of eight pages, right? If you had a larger signatures, let's say you wanted to begin with eight pieces of paper folded in half, making 16 pages, I would definitely go back through and do the second stitch, you know, coming down, catching that ladder stitch there. But as it stands right now, I think this is just fine. And so we now have this one stitched in to this piece of paper here, okay? And so now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the next one. And there we go. Now I've got all of my signatures attached in to this little attachment piece here, okay? And I'm double checking to make sure <laughs> all my orientation is correct. I've got the tops at the tops, the bottoms at the bottoms, and we're looking really good. Now all we need to do is attach this into our album. So we've got our album base here and it's all ready to receive our pages and we need to attach this in here and we're going to glue each one of these sides down onto the spine so that we've attached them in place. But before I do that, I want to add some something on the back of here to sort of protect all of these threads to make sure they stay where that I, you know, where they need to be and also just to give it a little bit more structure. And so that's what this piece here, the seven eighths of an inch wide piece is for. It's gonna fit right over all of that. Now, before I do that, I wanna take a little bit of double-sided tape and I just wanna sort of line up all of my tails here from my strings. And I'm gonna take this piece of tape and I'm, I just wanna catch them. You know what I mean? Like I just wanna catch some of those strings in the tape. Go ahead and um, burnish it down really well peel off the backing and it looks like I missed one of them there. So I'm going to get another piece of double sided tape and just go over it again. Coming over that. I just want to catch them. I want them to stay where they need to be. Burnish that one down, peel off the backing to expose the adhesive. There we go. And now I'm going to take this piece here that, you know, is an eighth of an inch narrower than the backing there. And I, I cut it more narrow so that it will fit right between those two folds that are going to wrap around. And I'm going to put glue all over the back side of this piece of paper before sticking it down over the tops of all of those strings, all of those running stitches on the back side. And that's just going to give us a little bit more um, structure. It's going to make sure that those strings aren't going to come loose over time. It's going to hold them in place. I'm folding to make sure that I'm, nothing is snagging. It all looks really good. 
want to go ahead and burnish this really well. All right, so now that we have this little piece of paper attached down over that, it's covering all of our stitching. We don't have any exposed threads and it's locking them in place. It's making sure that the, the chances of this coming loose are slim to none. <laughs> um, we've got a nice solid, you know, adhesion on here. It's carrying the load of all of that. So rather than there being a pressure point at the one stitch entrance, it's all the way across here. So we've got a nice, solid, strong attachment of our signatures to our spine attachment. And so now it's just about gluing it down. And I, again, I want to make sure that my orientation is correct. I don't want to put it in upside down. Make sure that my book is here correctly. Everything looks good. And I'm going to begin by placing glue all over one of these half inch flaps. And again, not a lot of glue, but a lot of coverage. And if you want to, you can take a brush and brush your glue on. I know a lot of, you know, people use brushes. I don't like having to clean out the bristles. I don't like the maintenance of having to do that. So I just come on with a thin bead of glue and then sort of scratch that glue around to spread it out a little bit. And for me, that works. Now I'm gonna take another double check, make sure I'm in the right position. I've got my top and my bottom in, in place here. And then this is going to get glued down the fold is going right along the edge of the chipboard of the spine, and I'm centering it top to bottom. So I've got about an eighth of an inch from the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this over and just double check my edge is right up next to that edge of the chipboard on my spine. The chipboard is one inch wide and this, these two half inch flaps are gonna add up to be one inch wide. And once I have it where I want it to be, I'm just gonna give it a nice firm burnishing all along there. Make sure I've got good contact. Clean up any glue if I need to. Double check that I haven't wiggled out of place. I haven't, I like that, it looks really good. I'm right where I want it to be. And so now I'm gonna place glue on this other half inch flap. And then this one is just gonna slide right back and butt up next to the edge of the one we just glued down. So you can kind of just sort of get it started and then just press it down. It'll slide right into place. I'm pressing down on my signatures. And then I'm gonna to try to come in here and run my bone folder along that little quarter of an inch section there that I can get at it. I'm also gonna slip my bone folder in that opening between the backside and the part that kind of folded back around. Coming in between each of the signatures and just pressing down, making sure that I've got good contact all along there. In fact, I'm gonna use a different bone folder. Flat edge, I can sort of run it along there, just like that. And it doesn't take long before the glue to catch, but I just wanna hold it sort of upright for a moment until it does. And we are good to go. And we now have all of our signatures attached in here. So now we've got all of our um, pages from our signature at attached here. I think they look awesome. And now we're gonna do a little bit of decorating and we're also gonna come along and we're gonna secure these threads here. So let's do all of that right now and then we're finished. So in the collection, we've got all these cut aparts and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cut apart that I think can, you know, sort of coordinate with this, you know, this scene here. Maybe this one, I think that would be really cute. And I'm just gonna cut it out and then I'm gonna glue it down over this so that those, those strings are also sort of encased in the adhesive. That way I make sure that in the same way as I sort of glued down the strings behind the, um, the stitching on there, they're not gonna come loose. It's gonna do the same thing here. So I am gonna secure the strings down preliminarily with a little piece of double-sided tape just so they're not wiggling around while I'm trying to glue this down. I'm just gonna come right over the top of them with some tape, burnish it, remove the backing, put some glue all over the back side of my little bit of ephemera here and stick it down as a way to sort of encase those um, strings so that they're not gonna go anywhere, so that this is gonna continue to be held together in the best possible way. <laughs> just burnish it really well. Make sure you've got it really stuck, especially around where those strings are. 
the tendency is for it to lift up. You just want to apply pressure until that adhesive can have a chance to grab a hold. Once it does, you're good to go. And now we've covered up that portion there. I'm going to get another one here. I'm going to get another one to cover up these strings here. Hold them down here with a little bit of tape. There we go. And now I'm gonna do the third one. And now we've got our third one down. So all of our signatures are in place. They're all secured. We don't have any threads showing. I think this is awesome. I love that this sort of has a little bit of give here from the spine. It helps these pages to be able to turn more easily. Now you can go back through and just sort of um, burnish them each open individually. It will help them to be able to move more freely. They're still a little bit stiff, you know. Um, we just stitched them all together. They're still a little stiff in their placement. The more you turn the pages, the more you work them, the easier they will be able to move for you. You just have to kind of go through and give them just a little burnishing like I'm doing right there at the spine where they're attached. And then once you've kind of gone through and worked them all, they're gonna open and turn much easier for you. Um, you're gonna be able to really have a lot of room on these pages, and <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. Now I do wanna go through and add a little bit of decoration as well as some little tuck spots for pockets. Okay, so I decided that I want to lay these little cut aparts along here and I think they'd be really pretty and I'm playing around with putting some ribbon around the edges and kind of making a ruffle effect and I, I like the way it's turning out but I'm not ready to glue it down yet so I want to show you kind of how I did that so the first thing I did is I cut out these shapes and they came from this sheet here and there's so many of them I mean there's all sorts of wonderful things you can fussy cut out of these papers you're gonna love this collection it's just so pretty and so then on the back side all I did was I took some uh, double-sided tape and because it's rounded you know you have to lay down a little bit and then you sort of create almost a pleat in it lay down a little bit more create another little you know sort of a pleat in it and I'm just sort of working it around um, the outside of this oval shape with this adhesive and once I've got all of that you know down so that I've got it kind of a perimeter around there then you go ahead and start peeling off the backing. And when you do so, these little places where you had to pleat it are kind of standing up. Just take that backing paper and press it back down. Just press that adhesive back down onto itself. It'll be doubled up in those places, but that's fine. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, I had to do this in two sections. So let me get this other piece off. There we go, press it down. And so now I've got you know some adhesive on the back of this little cut apart here that I cut out my oval shape. And now I'm just gonna take a piece of my ribbon and the first thing I wanna do is I wanna embed it, let's see, I'm gonna just lay the ribbon down like this so that I've got my raw edge embedded underneath there. And then I'm gonna come up and I'm just gonna start, I'm going about halfway into the ribbon to the edge of my paper and I'm just doing a little bit, I'm adding a little pleat doing a little bit more, adding a little bit of a pleat, and I'm catching it on that adhesive that I just put on the back as I go. So a little bit more, add a little pleat. And the pleats are pretty, but it's also just to make sure it's so I can get it, you know, because this is an oval. <laughs> and it's hard to make, um, you know, something straight round, right? It doesn't work that way. So just keep peeling back a little bit, add a little pleat. And I'm laying it down about halfway into the ribbon, just like that. And when I come back around here to this end piece, I'm just gonna fold it back on itself. So I've got the end kind of folded back up in here. Go ahead and clip that off, just like that. And so now I've got everything sort of held on the back side here. I'm gonna come over it with some more tape just to hold everything down. I'm gonna kind of come over like this. We'll trim off this little piece. Kind of come over there. And I'm just sort of piecing it in just to hold these pleats down in place. Um, it's not perfect, but it's fine. You're not gonna see this. And, and the more adhesive on the back, the better. So it doesn't matter um, if you're doubling it up like I'm trying to do here. 
that's actually a good thing. Okay, so I've just got some tape on the back there and then I can sort of lay it out where I want it to be on here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this one and I'll be right back. And now that we've got them all, you know, their little ruffles around here and I'm just sort of deciding where I want to lay them out, I wanna make sure I've got enough room to lay them where I want them. So just like that. That looks pretty good. <laughs> I'm very, very pleased with myself. I think they look super cute. So I'm just coming along here with some glue and then we're just gonna lay it out where we want it. I think that looks good. Yep, that's good. And then I'm just gonna give it a nice pressing. Just really press that into position right where I want it. Burnish it really well. This is so cute. <laughs> I like it. And then let's get the other one. Let's put it down at the bottom and then we'll kind of fill in with the center piece. And I think the combination of the tape and the art glitter glue is good because this is going to have a tendency to want to lift up. The tape will hold it in place until the art glitter glue can can catch, you know, take hold. And I want to really burnish it down. Go over the others too while I have a chance. There we go. <laughs> I love it. I think it looks absolutely darling. <laughs> it's so cute. And I don't think I'm going to put anything on these spines. You can. We definitely had the paper that you could cut and put on there, but I like it. I like a more simple look to it. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now, on the inside, let's go ahead and finish putting our decoration on here, and I'll be right back and show you what I did. folks so now we have finished it I think it looks so great I I love it <laughs> I absolutely love it I love these little frames here on the front um, our opening this is one of my favorite pages I just love this little vignette here with the birds and the balcony and the roses and then you just open it up so lots of room nice deep pocket here I went ahead and just glued down some of the ephemera bits just very simply for the decoration on the front of our signatures and then I took these little bits of ephemera to glue down and make these little tuck spots and I just put glue on two sides so I'm going to put glue on this side here and then all along the bottom and now I've created another little tuck spot so that I can either attach a photo behind it you know and so it's like a little matting element decorative element over it or really just use it as an actual tuck spot you know almost like you would for a pocket 
we've got all of these sweet pages. I'm just letting this pattern paper do what it does best. It's just beautiful. We did glue the little bits of ephemera over our tails of our string so that they're not showing and also to kind of help secure it into place a little bit better. Again, with another little tuck spot back here that can be treated as a pocket or what have you. I've got them all over on the fronts, backs of the signatures, on the insides as well. And these are just the sweetest little albums. I think this is a lot of fun. You can treat this as a place to put journaling, to glue some things down. I like doing albums like this that are a little bit less interactive and treat it more like a traditional scrapbook. You know, my great grandmother was born way back, you know, at the beginning of the 1900s. And she had these amazing scrapbooks that were just made of like newspaper, all sorts of other things that they would then glue whatever it is they wanted to keep their keepsakes into it. And I see an application very similar to something like this. Now on this one, I just put that little border piece down here. Again, it's a great place that you can tuck something into. It does serve as a pocket. It's not going to come out, but it's also a place that if you tucked a photo underneath, it creates that, you know, decorative strip across there. All of our pages being stitched into the signatures and then the signatures being stitched onto the spine. I, it's so secure. It's a wonderful way to do that. We've got all of these pages. There is no shortage of places to attach whatever it is that you want to scrapbook in here. That's for sure. And then we just end up with this. Another little pocket here on the back. We've got the magnetic closure here. It catches really well and I love it. I think it just turned out super cute. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you'll give it a try. Um, I hope you'll try to make something of it and make it your own. These are fun projects. These are beginning points for you to just launch off with your own creativity. And I would love to see the things that you make. If you do make something using one of my tutorials, feel free to post it anywhere you like. The only thing that I ask is that you also attach a link to the tutorial that you used. That way more people can find out about all the things that I'm making and maybe find some inspiration in that themselves. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you're having a fabulous day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you are finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Take a step into the river Get down on your knees Come to the mountain While taking in the view You will find that life is Greater than you knew When you go through the storm I will hold you, keep you warm